Hello everyone, happy holidays to you. Uh, you are watching the show to be named later. I'm your host, Johnny Boss, joined by our NFL ambassador to South America, Noah Storzinger. And uh, hey buddy, happy holidays to you. How you feeling today? Feeling good. I uh, I didn't wear green down in uh, Brazil, so I didn't get right. killed by the gangs. But uh, yeah, it was a, a good time. Now wait a minute. It's not it's not gangs. It's soccer. Which and you know what we we got plenty of time to get into um, football. You know, I mentioned happy holidays. We are on um, the the night before the NFL season starts uh, for Minnesota Vikings fans. You know, and we talked about it. It is it is to me. It's like the holidays. Um, however, if you are a Vikings fan, perhaps the holidays would feel like the Jewish kid on Christmas morning. Uh, but like I say, we will get to uh, NFL football in a little bit. I, I wanted to start off um, un unless there's something that you want to uh, you want to tackle right away, right off the bat. Uh, I, I like to go to baseball. Yeah, baseball's fresh off the top of my 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 brain right now. Um and I was at the game yesterday, so I have some opinions. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you know, just so that we can set this up, because I know that we've been gone for quite a while. It's getting uh, more and more uh, as time gets through and life, you know, gets busy and whatnot. We've been away from a long time. I know that there are some things that are said on the show that don't always add up, Steph Curry. Uh, but... We are going to, uh, to to get to this. So as of right now, Twins have, what, 21 games left uh, on the year. They're four and a half games up on the last wild card spot. They are half game behind Kansas City. They're a full five games behind uh, the Cleveland Indians. And, you know, I, I, I got to tell you right now, Noah, you know, I, I feel bad. For the Minnesota Twins fans right now, I really do. Uh, you and me, uh, my good friend Perm, I, I, I feel bad for us because we watch every game, but I don't feel bad for the organization because everything that's going on right now, you knew was going to happen when we started this podcast a, a year and a half ago. You know what I mean? Like you knew going into this year that they did not have enough going in and, you know, God bless them for, for still being in a wild card spot. But, but this is, this is getting ridiculous. It, it, and it's, it's hard. It's so hard to judge the season in the sense of like, I, I looked at a stat the other day, yesterday, we have a better record than we did last year at this point in the I know, season. I know. Um, you know, we are, we are 500, I think since the all-star break, but at one point in the year, we were, I mean, the best team in MLB since April. And it didn't feel like that. Right. Um, because we're not spending money. We've got all these injuries and that's the thing more than half of our team, big, big players are, are injured right now. We are, we are, we are throwing a triple a team out there. And I remember watching, uh, I last night, play. Oh yeah. Last night, man. And, and I'm looking at, I'm pointing out everyone to my wife and I'm like, he started in AAA this year. He started in AAA this He did. He did. He, he, I mean, it is AAA guys down yeah. the roster. Um, but I mean, you know, they're going to make the playoffs this year. Like, like I, that I, yeah, I, I, I'm not so sure, man. And, and, I, I thought, yeah, for sure that they would limp. I, I would say two weeks ago, I was like, yep, they'll limp in. But right now, um, I, I just don't know because they're not scoring any runs. They, you know, I mean, God bless Pablo is back to Pablo that, that we understood Bailey over, you know, and if you go with, all right, you got two straight fire guys who are going to keep you in the ball game. But yet they still are human. They're going to lose games um, down the stretch. Uh, otherwise, and you know, this is what I was talking about. You reap what you sow. And that was the first thing that I wanted to bring up is we knew it going into this season, uh, but the pitching rotation, absolutely ridiculous, um, at, at least right now. Because like I say, Pablo's back to where he needs to be. Bailey Ober has been head and shoulders, no pun intended, 
above what I expected from him this year. But when you break it on, uh, Joe Ryan, okay, fine, done, whatever. But even with Joe Ryan, that means that you would have had to have two rookies in your starting rotation. It doesn't because the, the Chris Paddock experience did not work out. Okay. And, and here's the thing with your, your remaining three guys who are now all rookies, the law firm, Simeon Woods Richardson, God bless him as well. But he is now, I, I believe has exceeded the number of innings he's pitched all of last year at AAA. And a buddy of mine brought up, and I, I don't know, the, I, I tried to Google this. I, I really don't know, and I don't keep up with the Saints that much. But he was claiming that in AAA, you, you go more of a six-man rotation than you do a five-man rotation, uh, depending on you know where you put the pieces going between Minneapolis and St. Paul or uh, Wichita. And Okay, so my point is, Woods Richardson has far exceeded any in, amount of innings pitched in a year which means that he is running on fumes right now and it shows, which means that in the most crucial games of your season, which are the next three weeks, you have a guy who is basically his arm is jelly. Okay. Then you got guys like Festa and, uh, and Zebby Matthews, who I think there is a future. However, I do not think that it was their time this year and you rush them right into it. And that's a kind of decision that can make or break a young man's career. Okay. Whether he's good. So, so you, you basically you're shooting blanks right now and you're hoping, you know, and Festa gave him a good outing the other night, but once again, when you're not hitting the ball, it doesn't matter uh, your thoughts on the starting rotation because it's, it's we're in dire straits here right now, folks. Well, we are. And I and look, I think one, two, three years down the road, it's going to be fantastic. But the issue is you, you, like you said, Zebby should not be pitching MLB ball right now. And, and credit to him. Like he's, he's thrown some, some had some decent games here and there, but I mean, this guy started in single a this year. So what yep. I mean? What do you yep. expect? Festa, you know, I think he was getting getting closer um, to contributing at this level, but not in the in the um, role that that we've thrust him into right now in being a guy who needs to go out there and win a game every day. You're not you're not just asking him to be a rookie who contributes. You're asking him to be a rookie who has to win right now, and and man, that's a lot of pressure and. You haven't even been able to, you know, market your craft yet. You you don't know what kind of major league pitcher you're gonna be. Um, I just I feel bad for it, but you know, when when you don't make any kind of push at all to address those problems right off the bat, and we said that from early on, from off season up to opening day, uh, throughout the year, you know, like. It, yeah, you, you you wonder how we're still in this right now. Well, and you know, and Woods Richardson has been like for for what he was asked to do this year. Again, has has outdone my expectations. Yeah, we what I thought he do. Yep. And and you know, I think he has been everything that you would have asked a rookie pitcher to do at this point in his career. Um, and I, you know, the the arm thing is is going to be tough. I think when you. If you make it to the playoffs, I think it's more of a, hey, we're going to ask them to go three innings and we're, and we're going to let the bullpen take the rest of it potentially. But, I, you know, I feel good going into a if, – if we're going into a three-game set, I feel really yeah. good with Pablo and Bailey going one and right. two. But then, you know, yeah, what do you do in game three? If there is a game three, there's rarely a game three, honestly, in these three-game yeah. sets. But – um, I, don't, I don't want to see Louis Var. I'm 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 done with Louis Varland, and and you know like God bless. Oh well, now he's back in the bullpen, full time or whatever. You know, and you can tell that guy. You know, God bless him for being a Minnesota boy, but he's one of those Minnesota boys that you can tell right away when he's rattled because his face and his neck gets redder and redder as, as he gives up a hit or, you know, and he was extremely frustrated the other night and, and should be like, I I'm done with Varlin, man, at least for this season, man, I, I can't stand watching that guy pitch. Varlin gives me the, um, if you remember Griffin Jacks before he was a reliever, we threw him out there for, I think it was like 10, 11 starts and he was bad. I mean, ERA over six, 
And I said, like, look, he has the stuff to give you some short inning relief relief stuff. And I I said, like, I don't I don't know how much I said it in my head more of, of saying, like, look, I think he could be a dominant reliever further in his career. And Jax has been. Varland has the stuff to do that one inning at a time, maybe a little more. But right. I think in the future, Jax could be or a, a Varland could be a nice bullpen piece, but right now he should not pitch any more right. this year. Right. And and they're going to rely on him down the stretch. And even when we get to the playoffs, I guarantee, I mean, he, he did last, last year in the playoffs, right? Didn't they, they uh, get to Rocco in a minute. Um, you know, I mean, when, when you choose to not address anything pitching. And like I say, like the only move they make at, at the trade deadline is a, is a piece of shit that didn't even last a month, which is incredible to me. Um, and I got to tell you, I I've been harping on this for a while now and I've, I've taken some heat, but I mean, do you want to know who has is tied for the most losses as a Minnesota twins pitcher this year? It's going to blow your mind. Who is it? Duran. Johan Duran. And and here's the thing, man. And I, you know, I, I made this point the other day. After he blew that bullshit last week or whatever, which, you know, we'll get to the defense here in a second. But when he blew that loss and he came out and said publicly, he said, well, Mariano Rivera, the best reliever in, in the history of the game, he had one bad year. How come I'm not entitled to one bad year? You know why? Because you're not Mariano fucking Rivera. All right. And Duran, to me right now, like in everyone I talk to, like it, it's, it's so comparable to what we're seeing, you know, in our own country right now, we're just going to put this big makeup on somebody. And because everyone says, why are you so hard on him? I love when he comes into the game and they turn the lights out and the fire comes out and everyone's jacked up. And it's like, yeah, but what about his policies? You know, I, that's what I'm saying. Like you can, you can put lipstick on a pig any time you want. All right. But if you're not eating well, the, the next day, it doesn't matter. And and like, like I say, our pitching is terrible right now. And I don't trust Duran going into crucial games, much less the playoffs, because he has been terrible this year. He has. It's he's been terrible in the in the sense of what you're used to, because right. realistically, I'm, realistically, okay. he's been a good reliever this year. Yeah. But yes, he's not been the Duran that that we have, are are used to. And I don't know if it's pit, pitch mix or 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 what. Um, it's guaranteed it's pitch mix. It. I would almost much rather see him just blow a guy by on three pitches, than than always just this Harry High School cutesy it up, you know. But but whatever. I, I'm not saying Duran's a bad guy. I'm just saying he is not what you you had hoped that he was going to be this year. And yeah, he's been. To you, you you said he's been good. I say okay because he puts guys on base every time he comes out on the mound, and you can't do that as a as a lights out closer or whatever it is. He's not Mariano Rivera. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, it, it sucks in the in when you're looking at Griffin Jacks, who's having almost a historical year for for himself. Yeah. Uh, not all, not yeah, not an all star. Unreal. No, and I don't I don't understand that because he is I think one of the best relievers in baseball right now um and it sucks you can't kind of go one two uh as you may may have used to but um but no and and the bullpen's tough because i think they're they're so cautious in in the sense of like you never know who's gonna blow up one year right i mean right like brock stewart was great um got hurt came back was obviously still hurt because just it, it was horrible. Um, I mean, you, it's why you don't like investing in the bullpen is so tough because relievers, I mean, you could throw anyone into a, into a relief role. It seems like, um, but the, but this year, I mean, Trevor Richards was atrocious. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand how you don't, 
you don't make any moves. And I, again, I hear that they want to cut payroll again next year. And look, if I'm Buxton, if I'm Correa, if I, why, I don't want to be here anymore. Are you kidding me? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute because I, I think I've got a solution to your, your, uh, your problem there. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep going on the twins because I have every right to do it. And, you know, I, I, I feel bad because like what you said, you know, they, they have a better record than last year and they're still relevant somehow. I don't know how that's possible. Um, but it, it, it wouldn't even be this in many regards. Like we could be an actual contender. And, you know, my next point is Minnesota twins fundamentals. The fundamentals have been absolutely horrendous. And I, I, I've got three different layers that I want to, you know, peel uh, as an onion. Number one, defense has not been good. And okay, you take Correa and Buxton out of the lineup. Yeah, but Edward Julian is an absolute fiasco in, in the field. And I understand, okay, well, it feels better if he you know, if he swings at the third strike instead of, you know, just letting all three go with the bat on his shoulder, fucking A. But his defense, how do you even justify that except that there's nobody left and you're hoping that he's going to knock the ball out of the park once out of every 30 at-bats? You know what I mean? But but the defense has been so poor. Austin Martin, boy, we miss Buxton, right? Uh Margot has been terrible in the field. We had several plays at the plate in the last week where we had them by three steps and just, nope, just couldn't make the play. All right. Um, and, and so defense is number one. Um, how about, did you ever learn how to hit the cutoff man when, when you were playing baseball? No, seriously. That was the biggest, biggest part is being an outfielder is hitting the cutoff guy. That That's all your coach preached uh and it it's it takes some learning when you're 12 but i mean in the when you're a, a big league ball player jesus how many times don't blaspheme how many times have you seen when okay the other team gets a huge hit and you're like okay and the guys are and the ball comes sailing over the second baseman's head into the dugout whatever it is don't get it but then my 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 third point on fundamentals is base running. The base running is so bad. I'll tell you what. The only way I want to see Jose Miranda on on the diamond if on offense is if he hit the ball over the fence, and then maybe he might not trip over second base and like break an ankle. Like the base running has been so bad, and like to piggyback on what I was saying, hitting the hitting the cutoff man base running. Last night, you see this where <laughs> the Royals hit one into the corner and our cutoff man is able to hit the catcher, I think about 20 feet in front of first or home, home base, right? Down 1-0. Next play, Kyle Farmer on base. And we hit one to the exact same place. And yeah. guess what? Kyle, you're, you're going to test... Rocco, you're going to test Kyle Farmer against Bobby Witt on the relay, right? And he's not out. He, the catcher doesn't have to come out 10 feet. He's out by 10 feet. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Farmer should have scored regardless. The, the, from, I, look, I was right on that third base line last yep. night. And first of all, I'm like, man, if we can just tie this game up, I'm going to feel good. Yep. And I'm like, Austin Martin does not hit the ball in the gaps, whatever. What does he do? He hits it right down the line, right to the wall. And I'm like, yeah, Farmer's coming around. I'm like, he's going to – like, I didn't even think about it, him getting thrown out. So I'm talking shit to all the Royals yep. fans. Boom. gets. I'm like, what happened? Yep, and so I and watched him. Like oh, and my God. His 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 rounding from, from halfway to second, around third. He said he it, slowed down. He slowed he down. He said he slowed down. <laughs> God. And we have seen more like how many times when we get a big hit and we do score a run and then, Oh, now Miranda's caught up between second and third. What happened there? It, it happens so often. And I made this point to my boy P the other night that I want to 
I, I want the Minnesota Twins to ban all pickoff throws to first and any snap throw from the catcher to first base or to third base because it only ends in tragedy. The ball always goes into right field no matter what. Um, you can't win. You know, like I, I was thinking we were going to win a division this year. Maybe. Like, I was just like, oh, you know, like I had this angel on my shoulder saying, Johnny, be this happy guy. You're not going to win a division on all the points that I've made. We haven't even come to the big ones yet. Um, but, you know, it, when I looked at the the Indians, the Royals, and the Twins, I was like, the Royals have the best starting rotation, I think, out of those three teams going into the playoffs, right? Cleveland has done what they've needed to do all year and have maintained it, right? The Twins are in a bad fucking situation right now. And... Uh, not having pitching, not having fundamentals, not having anything to rely on, having a triple A staff. I'm telling you, four and a half games in 21 games is not anything for Seattle. And oh, by the way, they play the St. Louis Cardinals this weekend who can only beat the Minnesota Twins nowadays. That's it. The Cardinals can only beat the Twins. And of course, at Target Field, fucking A. Here's the thing, though. I'm not worried about it. The, the Mariners have been trash. The Red Sox are terrible right now. Actually, the team that's on the come up right now is the Detroit Tigers. I think they're five out right now. Five out. Um, five out. Which, which is like, I, I mean, first of all, for all the people talking shit about the AL Central, I think we're the best division this year. Yeah. yeah, 14 yeah. Over I, I, I would say better, much improved, much improved. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be worried about the Tigers yet because I don't think it's it's their time yet. But uh, I, I don't know, man. And like, okay, so, and yeah, I'm, I am hating right now. So you can, you can say that. You can fucking take a picture of it. You can write it down. Whatever you want. Yes, Johnny is hating on the Twins right now because, um, you know, I, I, I made a, a point last night. I said we we're talking about if they limp into the playoffs or not. And I, I know my buddy was saying it in tongue in cheek, and he was like, I don't even want him to be in the playoffs. And and I was like, no, no, no. And he's like, yep, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. But it almost gives you that 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 gloom and doom or that no hope kind of feeling. Now, here's the the last two things. I know you're gonna disagree with me on this, Noah. I know I already know what I'm fucking walking into right now, but I'm gonna say it because yes, I've been wrong on a lot of things, but there's with the twins, there's been a lot of things that I've been right, right on the hammer, right on the nail. Okay. And here we go. Carlos Correa. Now hold on. Yes. He is the best shortstop I have ever seen wear a Minnesota twins uniform hands down. Absolutely. And it's why we need him. Okay. But he went down at all-star break, okay? And, you know, you talk about transparency, all right? Why can't the Twins be transparent like the University of Hawaii's football team where they put, have you seen the net they put behind, you know, the goalpost? So there's no doubt you know if that ball is going through the uprights, right? Why are the Twins not, like you think about Buxton the last two years, but with Correa, yeah, we hope he's going to be back for San Diego, blah, 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 plantar facetious, whatever. And when he came out and said, I guarantee I'm going to play this year. I don't know when, but I'm going to play. I guarantee it, but I don't know when. I knew right then we're not going to see him the rest of the year. Guaranteed. You don't think, you know, if we make the playoffs, he's coming back? No, I do not. And I'll, and, and, and I'll tell you why. So I know you're not going to like this, but I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out there with his plantar fasciitis, right? He had that last year, but it was in his left foot. Right. And so they said somehow that when that tear comes, it relieves pressure and suddenly you can play on it. It's not as painful, whatever this year, it's his right foot. They can't handle it the same way as the left foot because it's the right ankle that so they can't deal with it, which means that this could be a problem. Now, 
Two teams passed on it because of this, Noah. And we talked about it and you said, nope, it's not going to be an issue. It's not going to be an issue. But if what I am saying is true, if if this, if, if plantar fasciitis affects his right foot, that he they can't treat it the same way as that they could on a healthy ankle, which was his left foot. That means that he's going to have this Michael Williams bullshit going on the rest of his career. And like I say, two teams passed on him and said it was because of this. And now you're looking at that and then you are fucked, Minnesota Twins fans. Because if Correa, if, if, if this is going to be a deal, we haven't seen him for half a year, no. And there's no update. They never update you. Like they try to give you some bullshit about Buxton. But they never say anything about Correa, which that's why I believe he's not going to be back the rest of the year. And next five years, hello. Did you did you read the the thing about his cleats? That no. he was close to returning, but the issue is he has a cleat deal with Nike or whatever, and the Nike cleats are what he can't run in, and they can't they need to get him a different cleat that he'll be able to actually run in. Cause he's been running and playing. It's, it's the cleats that are causing an issue right now. And I think that's what because they're he doing. can only wear a Nike because that's his contract. Fuck the, the sign that the apocalypse is upon you. <laughs> Who gives a fuck about that? That can't be, you're not going to tell me that a guy of his caliber is not playing because he can't get the right shoe. This isn't playing football in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Come on. I th I think there's – I'm sure there's still pain when he's playing, but I think there's a level of, like, the shoe that he's wearing is causing more pain, and if he was wearing a different shoe, it would be a lot easier on him that he could manage. But, yeah, no, like, look, I, I, I think that he – I think right now the Twins are not worried – about not making the playoffs and that's why he's not back and they're going to give him the time he needs until the playoffs and we'll see him either the series before to get some swings in or right at the play at playoff time he'll make the roster and, and he'll play but I, I think it's gonna be the same with Buxton but Buxton I don't well gets ejected and then you know <laughs> Okay, well, that's that's all fine and good, but that that brings me to my my next point. And I, like I say, I know you're not going to like this, but so the idea was Buxton was going to join us in San Diego as well, right? But for sure, he's going to be back by Kansas City. All he had to do was go down to St. Paul for play not what nine innings in the field, and then he's going to be back, right? He strikes out in the fourth inning, his second of the night. He gets ejected from the ball game for arguing about the pitch clock. And my sources told me the only reason that he got ejected was because he knew he was hurt. Now, his knee and his hip are giving him problems. And I believe because they, they did actually update it in the Star Tribune this morning, um, Oh, no word on Buxton, but he's really, he's having a tough time. It's the same thing, Noah, that we've we dealt with for the last two years. And right now, and I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. It is time to cut Buxton loose. Okay. And, and the reason being is because you cannot continue to tell a fan base that this is the, the superstar that you know. We know he's a superstar. We, I love Byron Bucks. I love you. But it's not helping. Two years ago, we were in it towards the end in September with the Cleveland Indians. But Buxton was not available, right? Last year, comes down to the playoffs, and I don't know why they even pinch hit him in the playoffs. That was bullshit. Same deal. It's going to come down to this again. And if you go three years in a row where he is not a reason why you got to the postseason or you're going to get to the postseason and he's not going to do anything once he's in the postseason, then what the fuck are we trying for? No, and, and I'm sorry, I, but you got to look at it that way. And finally, if you can get something for him, then by God, do it. But he I, is not helping this team. I, I think at this point you're looking at 
because I I've been a denier of that for a while now, but I am at that point too. Now it's three years in a row, even his whole career at this yes. point. Um, you know, I, I, I think you could trade him for some starting pitching at this point. I think there is a team that would, would be open to, to giving up a nice starting pitcher. Um, because yeah, it, it's getting, it's getting bad. And, you know, even the guys you bring up, you're like, okay, let's get the next wave in a Royce Lewis, Brooks Lee. They're getting hurt now too, yep. uh, quite often. So is it a Minnesota thing? Is it some in the water or, or what's happening? I, 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 I don't know, but I, I think that, like like I say, I mean, it's been so many times this year, the last three years, whatever. Um, you know, Austin Martin obviously is not uh, the answer. I don't know anything about Deshaun. What's his fuck? I, yeah, I know. I, okay, great. Good. Uh, he will not be ready for the playoffs. You know, I, I heard he's the, he's the most athletic and the closest to Buxton that you have in the outfield. Um, but that's, that's my point is that if you finally cut ties with Buxton, you're going to be able to fill that spot. I would imagine. And it's not going to be Austin Martin or Manuel Margot. You, you have to focus on the future. Some, I, I think it at, at some point and this this guy is not helping us out he's not and and i've been saying it for too fucking long yeah and, and it sucks because he's i feel like he kind of figured out the hitting a little bit this year yeah. i mean he was hitting like 300 at, at, at one point so um yeah i i mean who was the guy to uh i'm trying to think of was it the mets that gave got rid of uh Michael Conforto. Conforto was supposed to be the next big thing yep, yep. in New York, and he was just always hurt, and they gave up on him. I think he's with San Francisco, I want to say, right now. Um, yep. He hasn't done he's been, anything. It's been all right. Mm. I mean, but, yeah. I, my all right. Point. My last point on the Twins. <clears throat> yes, I love the Grateful Dead, but, yes, I hate fish. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty much done with Rocco, dude. I am. And, and the point that I made – to my buddies. And I, I think I was, uh, I, I, I think that they, they agreed with me. I said, you know, it won't matter if you get rid of Rocco because the Falvines are just going to plug in some other robot that is going to do everything. But I I'm done. I mean, his decisions and always having to play the percentages when, when he pinch hit for Larnick the other night, just because, and, and like, <clears throat> when are you ever going to let guys figure it out and be able to just to perform because that's what baseball is instead of going, no, we're going to plug this in right now. ACDC. I, I, I just wish, but, but some of his moves and this whole, eh, it's not my fault because we have a lot of injuries and we're still, I'm happy about this. And I mean, I just have disagreed with a lot of his, choices on the field this year um and like i say i i guess it doesn't matter because they'll plug in anybody that's gonna the, play the same kind of shit that that rock was playing but i'm really getting tired of them i really am i i've, de I've definitely had my concerns with some of his decision making i think there are some decisions that i've actually been all right with that people did not like um and again, I mean, he's a manager of the year candidate. I, like he's still one, like he, this is still one of the best teams in baseball as much as we all hate it. And I, it's, I, I, I am not at the point where I would get rid of Rocco. I, I still think he's been doing a pretty good job, but there are obviously decisions. I think people forget like, People hated some moves that Gardenhire made, but we 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 love Ron Gardenhire, right? I mean, people hated. Oh, no, he never all won all anything. Moves. People hate. I mean, you know, it's it's yeah. it, it's part of the game, and I. But yes, I I I'm a little. I don't like the the percentage game as much. I think that's obviously where the game is right now. And to your point, yeah, Felvin is just going to put whoever whatever other numbers guy they got into the fold. So would I rather just roll with Rocco? Yeah. hundred percent. You know what? But it's going to be the same thing. And this is why I'm, I, I, 
I'm, I'm cautious sometimes when it comes to the where, where, where this game is going, because this is the point I made the other night. Falvin, they find another guy like Rocco, who's just going to do what they ask him to do. And I said, yeah, just like the St. Louis Cardinals have done by bringing a 34 year old guy that no one's ever heard of because he's got all these ideas like the Oakland A's of 2003 or whatever, but it, it's taken away from St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Believe me, I know I've been watching for 40 years and it's, it's not the same. And, um, you know, it, it, it just, it makes me sad sometimes as, as the way that I, 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 I see the game going or where I, where I see it's going. Now, I will say this. I didn't wear it because I didn't want to be punched, uh, but I, I got this hat uh, that I wanted to wear to the Minnesota State Fair, and it's, it's perfect for what we're talking about, or at least what I'm trying to say right now is it's the all red hat, but it says make pitchers hit again. And I – it's what I'm backing up what I'm saying about where, where this team's or this sport's going. You want, uh, are you saying get rid of the DH just in the national league or are you just like, let's have all pitchers hit again. I, you know, that that's a tough one because I never grew up with, uh, American league pitchers hitting. Um, but even when I play video games, like, the degree of strategy and whatnot. Like I, I love playing the St. Louis Cardinals in a season when there was no DH because there were some really hardcore decisions that you had to make, not only, you know, pinch hitting in the seventh inning, but knowing, am I going to ride this guy? What's my bullpen look like? It just anyways, you know, so, I, I thought it was a nice oh, sentiment, but uh, oh, no, I knew I, I'd get punched if I, I wore that hat. So no, I, I, I've, I, I don't mind the DH in the National League now, just because I think it it gives guys some more opportunities uh, to hit and, and and play a little more, at, and gives you know like a like a Jim Tomey could never go to a National yeah. League for the yeah. most part. Um, yeah. But at the same time, recently I've begun turning off the DH on MLB The Show and playing it the old way. Not so um, much fun. fun. So much fun, dude. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and the DH rule is one that I can, I I can you know go back the newer the newer rules. I, I'm just still I don't know if I'll ever accept. Um, but there you go. All right. So now uh, you know we mentioned the holidays and uh, Minnesota Vikings. You know, like I, like I say, I, when this is actually viewed, the Vikings will probably already have played their first game. Um, you're looking at your first seven games and I'll tell you, uh, tomorrow to me, the, the giants game is the only one that seems maybe winnable. <laughs> well, and, and I don't know because Jordan love, maybe, you know, he went down. So, and I don't feel bad for you at all by a uh, Verde Packers. I don't care. Portuguese motherfuckers. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying, um, the Vikings and, and I, my, my, some of my friends are getting, most of my friends are dealing reality. So they're, they're okay with this. And I am okay going into the season because I have no expectations. So I can just go in kind of lily nilly and, and just expect not to do well and enjoy the afternoon with my friends and eating good food, you know, and that, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the past couple of years we've been um, not necessarily spoiled with like the high expectations, but we, we, we've all expected a lot out of out of the Vikings teams because they've been very good recently. Um, and this is definitely the first year where, I don't know, I think if McCarthy was, was still healthy, it would be a little, it would feel a little different. But this year is truly the first year where I'm like, I... I don't really know what to expect. I'm not expecting to go. <laughs> Remember, you had Josh Dobbs as your quarterback for <laughs> several games last year. So, well, but, but at the beginning of that year, at the beginning of that year, you were it was it was hey man, this team needs is going to win the division. We you know right. we're, we're and we didn't make the playoffs. So you know it's this is truly the first year I feel like where 
Vikings fans are aren't expecting to make the playoffs. Um, and I, I've seen some some analysts that are pretty optimistic, surprisingly enough, uh, you know, about the Vikings still. But you know, with the pieces that are injured and obviously uh, the the death that we had, you know, it's it's. I don't know. I, the, the expectations aren't that high for me. So I, I'm, I yeah, I, I think the over under was six and a half games as far as like wins. And I said, seven, seven and 10, no better. Um, and, and that might change over the course. You know, I I'm hoping for a solid defense, um, you know, and my buddy brought it up, you know, you don't win championships with offense. You do with defense. Um, and that's, that's what I'm hoping. However, um, the secondary is, is, is questionable. Um, you know, you obviously you had, uh, losses, uh, due to injury and other crazy stuff. Uh, so your cornerback situation is not good. My buddy is like, well, Harrison Smith, he's, he's, he's gonna be a hall of famer. Yeah, that might be, but Harrison Smith is going to look slower and he's going to be out of position many times this year because of the cornerback situation. And, and so like, I'm, I'm hoping defensively that, you know, your front front seven or whatever are going to be able to hold. But, but uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's the defense. And when you look at like your defense as being the thing you're looking forward to. Yeah. You know, you're in a rebuilding year and an oh what the fuck kind of year. Don't you think? Yes. And, and I, I think, I think looking forward to the defense is that's how we know we're going to win games this year, because look like unless Sam Darnold becomes Baker Mayfield, you know, you don't expect him to lead you to, you know, eight, nine, 10 wins this year. Um, And you're going to expect the defense to have to hold it down. Cause I, you know, I don't think Sam Darnold's going to be terrible. I think he'll get you some points here and there, but, but, you know, it, it's the defense is what's going to have to step up and, and, and be great. Um, and like you said, the secondary is a little questionable right now. Um, so Listen, I take Sam Bradford over Sam Darnold right now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you see, you know, we haven't talked about it, but um, Jaron Hall, do, do, we just, we just cut him. Um, yeah, you, you, know, you mark my words, dude, he's going to be great. Well, not with the Vikings. So he cleared waivers and the Vikings just figured that he was going to, he was going to be available. And, uh, I believe he chose to sign up a, a practice squad contract, but not with us, with the Seattle Seahawks, where I think the writing was on the wall for him. Um, you know, he, remember he's, I think he's like 25 already. He, he's not a spring chicken. And I don't think, you know, once they sign Rippon, uh, I, I think even with McCarty not being a, 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 a factor, I think he knew it, I'm not, I'm not going to now we played four quarterbacks last year. So I, I don't know if that's the case, but, but uh, you know, I, I, I think I, I, I hurt one of my good buddies. He was talking Darnold up and, uh, and he claimed that the Niners were thinking of, now this is the story I got. He said the Paul Allen of San Francisco told Paul Allen that in the playoffs last year, that they were considering Sam Darnold over uh, uh, Purdy. What's that? Yeah. Over Purdy. And, and my, my point was like, I was like, yeah, but they didn't. And they got to the Super Bowl. All right. So there there's number one. And then my, my final rip was like, yeah, I can't believe Sam Darnold was available when the Vikings got him. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like if he was so close to being this kind of a quarterback, then you would have thought that other teams besides, uh, you know, he, what he had bad luck, his first two teams. And then he went to the Niners you would think there are a lot of teams that need quarterbacks in the NFL. You would think that people would be like, oh, well, well, no, he just he's just misunderstood like Sasquatch. And we just didn't understand what he's capable of. I don't think that's going to happen with Sam Darnold this year. Um, 
And and so that brings me to my I don't know your 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 thoughts on that. I did I had never heard that before, so I don't. I, yeah, exactly. I, I thought he was a backup quarterback. I don't. <laughs> I just I don't know. So so that brings me to the next point. You know because. Like I say, I don't want to be a chach about about this team. I just, I like dealing with reality. You know what I mean? And and so, um, we go to, well, Aaron Jones is going to be this. Say no, he's not. He's not walking on water for you guys. I, I'm sorry, Vikings fans. Aaron Jones is not going. And the combo of him and Ty Chandler are not going to be this new, uh, this new idea or like reimagining Minneapolis police and the Vikings running game. It's not going to happen. Okay. And so uh, to say that once, once the Vikings get down by a one or two scores, they're going to be throwing the ball. All right. And even with that KOC is going to throw the ball because that's what he does. Now you have a Justin Jefferson who absolutely amazed me with, who he had thrown him the ball last year when he was healthy and he still produces. Yep. That's great. He is a superstar and will be a superstar, but he's going to get tired being triple and quadruple teamed. And right now, or at least in the first six weeks, you don't have a lot of options offensively. If your running game's not open, Hawkinson's not going to be back till after the bye. All right. Uh, I don't know what the deal with Jordan Addison. I thought he got suspended for six games and now he says, I'm fully healthy and I'm ready to go coach. So I don't know if that is because of his appeal that he might be open for playing tomorrow or not, but he's done for six games. And and so your, your offensive weapons are a little dry right now. If you're a Vikings fan. I'm reading right now. Jordan Addison is playing in the opener. Right. And is that because he's appealing the six game suspension? Because I know the NFL, he had at least three, but then the NFL came out with a six game suspension. So I got to believe that he's going to appeal, which he's going to lose. And that's why he's able to play tomorrow. Uh, da, 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 possible. Da, 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 da. Um, I don't know. I don't see anything. I thought he did appeal. I don't even see anything about him appealing. It he said immediately appealed, I believe. Six game suspension. Interesting. Okay. Well, I, I guess right. he's playing. Well, I, I didn't even think well, he was well, playing. Right. Okay. Well, that's good for the Giants game. You know what I mean? But eventually it's gonna come back. Anyway, I, I mean you don't know what who's the Giants quarterback? Daniel Jones. Is that his name? Yeah. The only time he ever plays football is against the Vikings, right? The like he, <clears throat> not even the playoffs that year we beat them at home uh, and then lost to him in the playoffs that same year at home. I believe in his last two games against the Vikings, albeit it was two years ago, but I think he's like 51 of 72 or something throwing the, the, the football. Anyways, neither here nor there. I'm happy. Bottom line is we've got football back. Uh, I go to my buddies to watch the games and, you know, we used to do uh, a deal where whoever we were playing, we would, we would prepare food. Well, not me, but everyone else would prepare food that would compare to the team that you're playing. Right. So like you would have, Oh, we're playing Seattle. We're going to have seafood. Um, you're, you're playing uh, Chicago. We have Italian beef, Italian sausage. Okay. Uh, Green Bay has got a lot of cheese involved. Um, Los Angeles Rams. Yeah. Er I think that's potluck. Everyone just brings something because no one really knows. Um, then it gets to Detroit and no one knows what, wh what do you get in Detroit? So we just ordered a pizza. Yeah. Um, anyways, tomorrow for the giants, we're doing ribs, uh, because our good friend Lou Bavaro, who's from New York, he and his beautiful wife Jen from New York, um, they have a, a barbecue place down in Naples called Mickle Bob's. And so, in honor of our good New York Giant, you know, the Giants are terrible. Always would say that, you know, we're going to do this. I wish that we would still do some more like food kind of deals this season because I don't think we're going to win a lot of games. So you might as well just try to have a good time while you're 
you know, watching the games, I, I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least you get to watch the games. Uh, I have some issue down, down in Kansas city having to watch it. Actually now I know you don't like it. The fact that there are, the games are on every different streaming platform and everything that's actually going to allow me to watch these games even more. So it's kind of a well, good for you. For yeah, well, good for you. But you know, uh, <laughs> Now you you got you have to work during the game tomorrow or, um, I'm a we're twelve o'clock tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah, I'll be well. We'll see. We'll see what I do. Okay, so I'm glad you brought it up because I was I was not going to bring it up because I know I bitch about it every every time, but that streaming shit is is ridiculous. Now listen, I went to my buddy's house last night because the Packers are playing in Brazil. And that's a peacock game, right? So I get get to his house and he's like, I'm like, no, but the twins are because I was like, you want to watch both games, right? The twins are on Apple. So you can't go back to like during games, you have to watch. And he says, Well, we might as well watch the Packer game first because I don't think he could tape the game off a of peacock, where with Apple, you could still start it from the beginning. The game in Brazil took five hours. We didn't even get to the Twins game until like 11.30. Now it's, oh, well, it's, it's noon. I think the Gophers play. Oh, no, they're on Peacock too. The ridiculousness of having to find a game somewhere. And then, like I say, if you go to a buddy's house and like, well, I'm sorry, I don't have that streaming. Well, you could have told me that before I went there. But how would anyone know? It is absolutely ridiculous, Noah. It is so stupid. I'm just going to get you like eight TVs on your wall and you can just go from game to game. <laughs> Talk about that. No, there. Oh, all right. Let's get back to the NFL. You want to talk about ridiculous and stupid. The NFL playing a game in South America. Okay, and I know it's all about yep, yep. Okay, and selling t- uh, merchandise and whatever it is. Uh, there is nobody on the continent of South America that cares about American football. I guarantee it. And anybody from South America that cares about American football, I guarantee, is already here in this country. Okay, there it is. So to see that, and I, I'll tell you, I if I were a Green Bay Packer fan which I'd be pissed that, that I not only would have to sacrifice a game, you know, like, you know, and maybe in Philly, it would have been tough as well. And you don't know what would happen, but the field conditions in Sao Paulo were absolutely horrendous Um, to have to take off and not be able to be able to prepare the way that you would normally for an opening, like the, the first game of the year, whether it's on the road or not, you're playing in the jungle five hours from Rio for crying out loud. You can't even see the good stuff. Uh, I just, I, I, I really don't make much sense of having to watch that game in Brazil last night. It was, it, it was stupid to me. Well, and, and look, like it is all about money. And I, I was like, I, I mean, look, it's not like uh, Brazil is, is the safest of, of, of countries right now too. And, and you know, that's why it, and, and I, I, it sucks. Like no one likes going to London anymore either right now. Everyone hates it. And to have to go to Brazil sucks. And I also saw that, you know, on the team planes, when they were flying down, they were told, don't fall asleep. You need, you know, with the, I guess there was a, a the yeah, time and they told, don't, don't leave the compound or whatever either. Yeah, so uh, you know that that seems fun. Um, not at all. Like, it, it, it well, there were players cool. that would would not bring their families down there for that game for that reason. And 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 yes, you know, I, I talked about it last night. Like, so the 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 soccer team that hosted that that game last night between the Eagles and the the, the Packers, uh, Corinthians, I believe, is is there no affiliation with St. Paul. Uh, so their big rivalry is a team that uh, is is green and uniform color. So their players that play on Corinthians cannot wear in public anywhere. 
anything green, like a t-shirt, shoes, anything, or they get kicked off the team, right? Um, they wanted to paint their field black two years ago because they don't want anything, like the pitch can't even be green. You got two teams, NFL teams, their primary colors are green, right? The Eagles wore black helmets for that reason so that they, I don't know, wouldn't be, you know, the, the team bus wouldn't be taken over by, you know, guys on scooters with, you know, M16s. Or, so the Packers wear green. Um, here's my point. The soccer team Corinthians has a fan base of 45 million people in South America or wherever in the world. I never even heard of them. All right. Tell me how Green Bay versus Philly in American football is going to draw anyone out of a, a country, a continent, a culture that just got no time for American football. Ridiculous. I don't know. I have no, I have no idea. They could have picked anywhere. Like you, at this point, I'm like, go play in Japan. I think, I think Japanese people would have loved it. I think, I mean, have they done a game in Mexico yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, and, Mexico and there are, and I believe there are four, four more international games, uh, three in England and one in Germany coming up, including our Vikings who that's a home game, but we don't get to break Aaron Rodgers shoulder at home because we have to play in fucking London. All right. Now here was an interesting point that was brought up last night as we were arguing this point. And I think it's a great point. So you got one of my good friends who him and his father are, you know, really into premier league, you know, in, in England, even though they're Russian, I don't get it. Okay. But here's my point. The premier league would never, play a Premier League match. I'm not talking about an exhibition where Chelsea comes over and plays the LA Galaxy and everybody gets all hard and bothered about it, whatever. I'm talking about Chelsea would never play another team from their division in New York City or in Los Angeles or in Kansas City. Okay? That counted in the standings. I think that speaks volumes right there because even Major League Baseball played a major league game that counted in Japan, right? You've got multiple games in the NFL, but the rest of the world don't give a shit. What, what they have as their, as their guts and their baby, they would not, they, they wouldn't compromise their principles by going, you know what? We'll go to the United States because maybe Russian people will tell all other Americans that the Premier League in England is the hottest thing going. So we're going to sacrifice one of our own matches to play it there in across the pond in the States. What happened? And that's no, and the I, problem. I like, I don't, I don't know that like the whole idea, I mean, it's money, but, but it's, you know, we're going to expand the reach of the game. So, you know, the, the people from England or, or Germans, you know, Japanese can experience the, you know, the professional sports in America, how about they just come to America to experience it? You know, like how you, know, because like we have to go to Europe too, if we want to experience a premier league game, you know, that, cause that's, that's what you do. Yep. Let, let's keep it like that because there are, there's livelihoods at stake, uh, you know, when, when it's this, these high professional games and, and it's, it, it just seems like we're playing around at this point. Well, and at least if you are going to play it overseas, don't, put it in the Detroit of the world, you know, like, Oh yeah, I'm going to, you know, like, like if you were from Appleton, Wisconsin, would you go, Hey, I'm going to San Paulo to watch my team. And like, I feel really good about it. I, I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? It, it just, and then the pitch itself was so bad, you know, like Barkley had this great debut, but I remember his first carry, he fell right on his bottom and it, it, it was the whole game. And I know Jordan love, Injury isn't going to have anything to do with the field, but why would you put your players in that position? Doesn't make any sense to me. No. Nope. All right. Uh, speaking of football or somewhat, did you happen to see last week, uh, the big 10 conference went 17 and one. 
in uh, in win loss, uh, do you happen to see who who was the only Big Ten team that lost last week? Our Golden Gophers, baby. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, and the only thing I'm going to say about it because I could go on and on about how college athletics is basically is it's going to be dead to me in a few years because it's so bad right now. I want to explain why that is. Uh, for the last two weeks, I, I've, I've been flipping and I, I see on the Big Ten Network, Big Ten Network Classics, Washington versus Iowa in the Rose Bowl. Big Ten Classics, UCLA, Michigan, Rose Bowl. Big Ten Classic, Oregon Volleyball. And I got to live with this shit? Are you kidding me? So I go to the the great Minnesota get together and I go with my, my good friend, Marty, which is a friend of the show. And I'm complaining about how ridiculous this is, is that we have to accept now that Washington and USC are now a part of big 10 classics. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm stating how, how terrible this is. And he had his, his special lady friend was there and I knew she was a Michigan state girl. And I thought she would at least support what I was saying, nothing. And then Marty was all smug because he happened to graduate from USC. And then in the same breath, I said, well, you know what? Utah is going to be, oh, no. You know what? Fuck Utah. Utah is never coming to the Big Ten. And I'm like, "What? wait, why are you so hostile against Utah? And he's like, I hate Utah. Mm. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. Utah wasn't even in the Pac-10 when you were going to classes at USC. It's the same thing. And now you're upset because of the prospect of Utah joining the Big Ten, which will what will be will be. But I'm still not okay with USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington are now a part of my culture, just like Rutgers is and Maryland is. It it is oh, it gets me angry. It gets me so upset. It, it's it, it's all a game now. Like it, it, it's not even it's not even fun anymore. Like conferences used to, it, they used to matter, and it just doesn't even seem like there's there's the culture, so to speak, anymore. Yep. With with all the the moving parts now, like you can't even, I can't even follow it half the time anymore. Like I don't even know where no. who's playing and what now. Yep, I know it. I know it, and you know I. I mean, I, I, I feel bad for you because we talk about, you know, I brought up old conferences, but like when I was growing up, you always had the traditional conferences. You might have a school that would move every once in a while, but they were all still regional. You know, like the Pac-10 that was the Pacific Coast, all right? You had the Big Ten, which was a conglomerate of the Midwest. You had the old Southwest Athletic Conference. You had the SEC, ACC, Big East. You had a Notre Dame team that was an independent. Are, were you aware of this, Noah? Like out of all the conferences in the world, you had like two independents playing and Notre Dame was one of them. That meant that they would seek out their own schedule for, for football and then think basketball later they, they joined. But that was like unheard of an independent team and they'd be a top 20 team because they would go out and look for the best teams to play. I don't know. I, I'm glad that everybody's getting paid, but the college athletics is so done to me. And it, it's going to be like for a long time, unless they try to fix it. I, yeah. And you know what? I, it's where I appreciate it. Like, you know, going to school at NDSU, we had uh, the Summit League, which which has rarely changed, and that feels right. fun because it it now is. You a, got St. Thomas there. We do, and it, it's a regional. And St. Thomas, I think, is eligible now to to make yes. the tourney. Um, yep. And it, it's a truly regional conference. Um, well, that's not true. Summit's got they've got some California schools, but but I, that's fine. I, it's it's independent. What they don't anymore? I don't. I not to my knowledge. We had. Um, oh. I thought you cool. seen San Diego was in that kind con that that conference. They were no, though. 
I they were I think I believe the farthest team out we have is uh what? I think Oral Roberts is our is the furthest one out. Well that's Oklahoma. That doesn't count. <laughs> um all right. Well I I guess I see what's that? Denver maybe. That's I huh. it's it's really it's really close. So um but yeah, I believe we had a California team. It would have been a couple of years ago. I want to say. Anywho, I I am I am I'm pretty displeased with you know. I'm watching Texas beat up on Michigan right now. I'm I'm not uh, can't say that I'm sad about that, but uh, I, I I feel bad about the way that college football or and basketball is because pretty much it, it means the death of the University of Minnesota, and it, it does because. You know, we brought this up, we, basketball coach trying to do a good job, and now his entire team is decimated because they all went somewhere else. And, you know, and like I loved the fact that they brought this guy in from New Hampshire, uh, and they are like, and a lot of people say he's the, the second, he, he's Tanner Morgan type. Yeah, exactly, he's Tanner Morgan. I'm going to pass for 10 of 15 for 102 yards and we're going to run the ball up there and we're still going to lose by three points. Like I just don't see a team, a, a program like the university of Minnesota ever getting to the upper echelon again in basketball or football. And it's because of the way things are set up right now. Well, yeah, you, you, you've saturated the talent in these in these conferences now where where a team like the University of Minnesota used to have somewhat of a chance but when you look at recruiting I mean they're they're not pulling it wouldn't they, matter well no they got they got uh, supposedly the gopher football team got this quarterback from California that's really gonna be good but do, my point is let's say that he comes next year and he, Let's say the Gophers go eight and three, and everyone's all crazy on Gopher football. You know he's not going to be the quarterback of the Gophers the following year. He's going to go, and and ah, just just disappointing. You know, the only other thing I can say, and this is what I'm going to leave you on, because I don't like to harp on things that we always bring up, but um, it it it's disappointing. It's it's almost as disappointing as. You know, I, I feel somewhat responsible that because we were some of the guys that talked about it, the Caitlin Clark Angel Reese comparison. The only thing more annoying right now is Trump Kamala or Kamala Harris. Honestly, like I'm done with both of both of those deals. I don't want to hear anything more about it because it almost made it should have been about the fact that the Lynx beat the Indiana Fever's ass last night. All right. But all you ever see in women's basketball is the comparison of those two women and don't care anymore. I know we talked about it, but don't care anymore. I mean, I think the reason you, you talk about it is because, I mean, when does anyone else talk about the WNBA? Never. Right. And so, I mean, it's the two topics that keep them relevant right now um, until next year when I think you have some more talent uh, influx into the WNBA. But I mean, at that point, like, look, I didn't give a shit about the <laughs> WNBA until this point. I didn't <laughs> like, I now I'm actually somewhat watching highlights. Somewhat. somewhat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was funny because we were tied to a buddy and he was like, he didn't have any of the streamers and he's like, ah, I'm watching links fever right now because he didn't have it. And I'm like, well, what's the score? And he's like, ah, I'm not really sure. Uh, I guess it's on, you know, but it's the, it's the fourth quarter. It's 30 to 28 <laughs> for what the Gophers in Rhode Island. No, like the score. I, like I don't, I don't, I was just hoping. All right. All right. Well, we've gone way over, I think even with, with the break, but it was, it was good to get back in and, you know, and happy holidays to everyone, you know, like enjoy the NFL for what it is. I, I do. I, it's, it's it's one of the playoffs that I actually enjoy. If the Vikings are out, I'll still watch every NFL playoff game where I don't watch every NBA 
uh, playoff game. Baseball usually, but I can get bored easily with that as well. So enjoy it for whatever. Eat your ribs. Uh, eat your chicken wings. Have a great time. Um, remember, this is the only time the Vikings will be 500 is right now. So, you know, for the Vikings, for the Twins, and the Timberwolves right around the corner, God bless all of us. For Noah Storzinger, I'm Johnny Voss. We'll see you next time.